Okay, I think I lost half of um, half of the video I just took for the problem A2, but um, hopefully the other part will have worked and you won't be able to see my smiling face, but you'll be able to see the solution. So that's what I am hoping for anyway. Okay, so we begin with computational problems part B, number one. An infinite conductive half plane goes from x equals minus infinity to x equals infinity and from y equals zero to y equals infinity. It has a charge density of minus sigma coulombs. Another goes from y equals zero to y equals minus infinity with a charge density of plus sigma coulombs. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, and there's a couple other things that I'm just going to put in the drawing because I don't want to take too long here. So what we have is this. We have some sheet of charge and we have another sheet of charge actually that is a question do we care if these sheets are conductive or not no we don't as long as it because we're told it has a uniform charge density of sigma could be conductive could could might not be could be insulator could be a conductor we don't care okay but we are told this we are told that this goes off in the plus y direction that they meet along the x-axis. So here's the x direction and then here's z and we're told we want to find the electric field at some point there. So I mean I don't know this is the exact same problem we did um, on that on a big long video and so if you looked at the video and thought about it, this should have been pretty straightforward but even without that Okay, even without that, what are we going to do here? What's our strategy? We know this is plus sigma here. We know this is minus sigma here. So we know that some little spot here has a little dq. And that little dq is going to make some electric field over here. So we're going to get some electric field. Let's see, this is positive, so this will go out like that. <coughs> okay, so... You you can calculate this, right? You know this is just at some location, x, y. This is some location. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'll, I'll, I'll do this x, y, z. Let's go ahead and make these, um, yeah, let's just leave x, y, z. But here at this point P, let's say that point P is at x, well, I'll do this way, x, P, y, P, z, P. Okay, but because of what we're the, the axis we have chosen, where we put chosen to put our point P, then we know that we're putting it on the where x and y equals zero. So we know x p and y p are going to go to zero. Why is this important? Because what are we going to need? We need we need to know where the we're calculating the electric field. So we need to know e of p, which equals k q over r squared r hat. Okay, so what do we need to know? We need to know q, we need to know r squared, we need to know r hat. So, what if this was just one charge? Then it would just be q, right? But we're told it is a charge density of sigma, so what's the charge? If it's sigma per unit area, then if I multiply by the by an area, I know how much charge is in that area. So my Q, I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, let's just do this for now. Let's just say Q equals sigma dx dy. So it's just this, it's this spot right here. Okay. What if that was the only charge we have? What if we didn't have any of these planes, anything? The only thing we have was this little tiny square. We could calculate that, right? Well, if you can calculate that for one spot, all you need to do is integrate it to get the sum. And since I'm not even requiring you do the integral, you should be able to set up the integral, okay? So all you're doing is just adding them together. And I hope you guys understand that the reason we do the integral, I mean, imagine doing this without calculus, without being able to integrate. What would you do? You'd have to get, you'd have to calculate a whole new R for this and add it. Then you're going to calculate a whole new Q and R for this, 
whole new Q&R for that. You have to keep going and going. It's incredibly, it's, it's, it's an, an, a virtually insoluble problem without calculus. With calculus, it becomes easy, okay? So, so but, but in concept, what are we going to do? We are just going to, we have a DE that is caused by some part of, of the charge here, the charge distribution. We have a DE, and that DE is equal to KDQ over R squared plus R hat. We now know DQ is sigma DX DY, so we're only left with doing R and R hat. So we got some position X, Y, Z. What is the O? And we're going to this position here, 0, 0, Z sub P. Okay? What's R? It's just the square root of, I'm going to, I'll, I'll draw it this way, I'll write it this way to begin with, XP minus X squared plus YP minus Y squared plus ZP minus Z squared. And this is just the definition of of a distance. Now, the reason I wrote it this way is because with this as our definition of R, we actually get the direction of the um, of the vector as well. So we don't just get the magnitude, we'll get the direction. And we'll we'll do that in just a minute. So we but we made a really good choice by choosing this at this spot on the axis. XP is zero, YP is zero, Z is zero because all the charge is in the plane where Z equals zero. Therefore we end up with this expression, but minus X squared is the same as X squared. So for the R all we have is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z sub p squared. I believe you guys have seen that somewhere before. Okay, so this equals r, so we now know we can get this r squared. What's the only thing left? r hat. Let's go ahead and use that nice convenient definition we have that was on the equation sheet. Now we have r over r. So r vector over the r magnitude what is the R vector? Well, I'm going to go back to this. Like I said, we set this up so it would it would um, directly flow out the directions. So it's minus X in the X hat, minus Y in the Y hat, and plus Z sub P in the Z hat. Okay, so that's what our vector R is. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not quite what our vector R is. We need to then divide it by X squared plus Y squared plus z sub p squared. Okay, so now we know r hat. That's it. Okay. I know I keep saying this, and you guys keep not believing me, but the problem is essentially done now. What is our strategy? Our strategy is to calculate the electric field due to these two sheets by calculating the electric field due to every tiny spot on these two sheets. And we know what the Q is. Um, we will have to change this from a plus to a minus, so we'll keep track of that. Um, and we know what the R is, and we know what R hat is. There's nothing more in this equation, okay? <laughs> That's how simple this is, all right? And I apologize. I don't mean... Um, I, I, I mean, that's how straightforward it is. The problem is you look at a problem like this and you say, oh my gosh, that's so complicated, I can't do that. Break it down. You know how to calculate the electric field due to some charge at some location. You know how to calculate that. All you're doing now is adding it up. Okay? So, set it up like this. And then you have... So now, what are we going to do? We're going to do this integral right here. And what do we need to, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to write over that K. Um, what do we need to do? We need to, now we need to use our understanding of the problem a little just to set up the integrals. But all we're doing, remember, conceptually, what are we doing? We're calculating the electric field for every little bit of charge and adding them all together. So let's go ahead and add up all this one. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do this and add up all this one. Okay. So what is our charge density there? It's plus sigma. So what, and, and now all I need to know is what area is that? Well, let's look at it. 
we, here's our x, we go positive x here, we know that this goes out to infinity and that goes out to infinity, so we're doing an integral over x from plus infinity to minus infinity, okay? And you can just look at this picture and you see that's what's happening, okay? Meanwhile, what are we doing with y? With y, we're going from zero, we're starting at zero, and we're going out to minus infinity, okay? So, what's our integral going to look like then? We're going to have, and this is all we're doing now, is just substituting in right here. This is the equation we're going to use for the rest of, the, the, the rest of this problem. All we need to do is be careful in what we put in there. So, we're going to say, we're going to do this integral on the left easy, because this is just e total. So our e total at point P is going to equal k, I'm going to substitute in our, our um, dq, sigma integral from, yeah, let's do this. Let's go minus infinity to infinity and integral of 0 to infinity of dq is just dx dy, uh, sorry. I'm going to do this dy dx because the way I've written it, we're going to do this y integral first and then we're going to do this x integral. Okay, dy dx and then, <coughs> excuse me, then we're going to have, we have an r squared, which is this squared, so we're just getting rid of the square root, but we have one extra r in there, so as you guys have seen before, this is x squared plus y squared plus z sub p squared to the three halves. All right, and what do we have? Well, this is times r hat. What's our r hat? It's right here. It is minus x. Um, sorry, I kind of cheated because I already took account of this r here, and so I already put that into this. So all I need now is minus x, x hat, minus y, y hat, plus z sub p, z hat. And these are three separate integrals because they're in three different directions. So the three different directions are normal to one another, so they don't influence one another. So we just do this integral, this integral, this integral, and we're done. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do, let's see, what one are we going to do? Let's do, let's do this integral first, okay? Um, is that the one I want to do? Maybe I want to do the x one first. Yeah, let's do x first. Sorry. So we're going to do this x integral first. So what is that? We have k sigma. Um, in the equation sheet, you notice it doesn't matter what order I do this. So I'm going to flip the order around, and I'm going to have 0 to infinity. Um, I'll go ahead and pull these out. I know you guys at some point were talking about how putting the differentials out here made things clearer, but as long as you're clear in your own mind, you're okay. Well, and in my mind too, when you write it down. All right, I'm going to go minus infinity to infinity. I have a minus x hat, or excuse me, a minus x, and I have an x squared plus y squared plus z sub p squared, and I have that to the three halves, and da da da. Okay. All right, and this is in the x hat direction. So, um, there is my e sub x for, um, I'll say e sub x one, because that's only half, that's this side, we're only looking at this side over here. All right, well, let's just look at that and see what's gonna, oh, I'm sorry, I told you I was gonna write these and then I didn't. So this is dx dy. So remember, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this integral before we do the other one. And let's just look at that. It's going to go from minus infinity to infinity. This is an even function right here. It is an even symmetric function, which means it has the same value for a, a x for any magnitude of x. Either negative or positive will have the same value. This has the same magnitude, but it has the opposite sign. And so when I go from minus infinity to infinity, for every spot that's out here, I'm going to have another spot that's equivalent over there, and they are going to cancel one another out in the x direction. And so I can look at this integral and say, I'm not even going to bother. I'm done with that. 
I, it, it's going to be zero. Okay. Another thing I could do, I could look at this. And so I wanted to do one of those mathematically. But now let's look at one of these physically. So we took some location here. So remember, I chose this spot and I said this. This gives us this E in, in some direction. But over here, an equivalent spot, let's see, what would be the easiest way to show this? Um, yeah, let's go ahead and just do it this way. So over here, I'm going to have an equivalent spot. In other words, this spot is, um, let's see, this was minus x, minus y, 0. Over here, it's plus, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this was plus x. Plus x, minus y, 0. This is plus x, plus the exact same y, 0. So the r squared is going to be the same. The r hat's the same, except with the opposite sign in this direction. I'm sorry. Let's just skip the r hat because we're going to we're going to look at that here. So what do I have here? I have a minus sigma. Minus sigma, what does that mean about the direction of the electric field? It means it goes in this direction. So what's going to happen to the z component of this? What's going to happen to that z component? The z component is going to go to zero, right? You can see that for every spot over here, it's going to push up E by a certain amount, and there's an equivalent spot over here. It's going to pull E down by a certain amount. Therefore, I do not need to worry about the Z integral. So, Z integral is, I'm just going to ignore it right there. So, we can also, while we're here, we take one more look and say, we got rid of X mathematically, but we can make that same argument. We got rid of Z just by making the physical argument, but what about Y? We'll just look at this right here. We have this spot right here. It's The z is canceling, but what's happening to the y components? They're actually adding to one another. So this and this are going to create a resultant e sub y. And that's what I need to calculate. So what this reduces to then is this. We're going to have e sub t at some point p equals okay sigma uh let's do it this way and let's do it this way let's go ahead and say we have a minus y over oh, excuse me x squared plus y squared plus z sub p squared to the three halves and this is in the y hat direction. And oh, so that's our, the, the, I forgot the other integral in here. So I'm going to stuff that in here right now. So I'm doing a plus sigma right now. Where is sigma? Where is sigma positive? It's sigma is positive from zero to infinity. So my other integral here goes from zero to infinity. All right. So that's half of the y. What's the other half? The other half is summing up the charges from over here. Okay. So what's that going to be? It's going to be exactly the same. Okay. Sigma. Oops. Dy dx. Okay. Sigma. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it like this. Okay, I'm doing it this way, but we're going to fix it in just a second. Okay, so this is exactly this is exactly the same integral that we have here, except for one thing that I have um, that I've yet to take account of, and that is it's not plus. What's the sign of the charge over here on this side? The charge is negative. Okay, so I need to put another minus sign in here, which is going to make that plus. Okay, now we can look at this mathematically and we just say, okay, from zero to infinity, we're going to get a negative number. This is going to add up. We'll have some negative number here. From, yes, 
from 0 to negative infinity, this is going to add up and it's going to be some negative number here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Something. Oh, I might have done these in the wrong direction, but it doesn't matter. In other words, this might have been from infinity to 0 and then from minus infinity to 0. But we're going to ignore that because what do we know? We know that these are going to have the same sign, whatever that is. And... Dun, dun, dun. Yep, we know these are going to have the same sign, so we know these are going to add to one another. So we're just going to make sure that that happens. Yeah, I played a little fast and loose with that, but that's all right. Okay, and then this is it. You're done. As far as I'm concerned, you get full credit if you get that. Um, if you want to, however, you can go ahead and look at this and say, well, this is, I'm going to do this y integral first, and what is this? This is minus, well, I'm going to go ahead and take a minus outside here. K sigma integral of 0 to infinity. Um, I'm just looking at the y integral now. So this is going to be y squared plus something, which I'm just going to call alpha squared to the 3 halves, y hat dy. And then on your equation sheet, you saw that this is, I think it's 1 over, 1 over the square root. Oh, where do I have it? Oh, 1 over, 1 over alpha. Yeah, so 1 over the square root of alpha squared. So this is going to be 1 over alpha. And I'm, I'll go ahead and do this once again. I was not asking you to do this, but just so you guys see it again. Um, minus k sigma. This is now, and now I'm putting back in the fact that this is a, uh, that this is a double integral. And that I have yet to do my minus infinity to infinity of, um, what was this answer? This answer right here is 1 over alpha. So I'm going to put 1 over alpha inside this new spot. Put 1 over alpha in here. But what is alpha? Alpha is uh, x squared plus z sub p squared. Okay. All right, and then we have, oh, that's it. Yep. Um, y hat dx. So now we just have this integral do, which is, oh, gosh, yeah, I didn't give you the right one. Yeah, okay, I apologize. Um, all right, let's just leave it at that. We can uh, we can look this up too, and it also it becomes I think just z sub p, maybe z sub p squared. I can't remember. In any case, we look that up. We can calculate. We can do an x equals a sine theta substitution. There's all sorts of different ways to approach that, but it's not the important point. You get here, you're done. You get here, you're even closer to done. Um, and then you would have twice whatever the field is that you calculate here. That's just the first term, and then we have the second term. But like I said, I'm not asking you to do that here. All I'm asking you to do is get to there. All right. Buh. That took just as long as going through the other 